Once upon a time, there was a young woman by the name of Lilu living in the land of Carefree. But everybody called her Red Riding Hood because she always wore this red, old, grungy, weather-beaten, flea-stricken hoodie. And she hated it. So she wanted to renew herself. She wanted to buy a green hoodie. She wanted to be someone else. And she knew just when she was going to do She was going to buy this green hoodie in time for her visit to her badass grandma. So she did what all the kids in Carefree did. She went on the search engine Bling and searched for hoodies. And she ended up on Ulfur's Uli's website. And what do you know? There were, there were hoodies for late night raids, hoodies for romantic evenings, and hoodies for visiting grandma. And it was just three clicks away. She clicked. It's in her basket. She clicked again. Order. She clicked again. She already had a PrayPal account. So that was three clicks. And her order was sent. But then this white dove came with the confirmation letter. And apparently, the shipping and taxes were a bit higher than she had anticipated. And the deliver time meant that she wasn't going to get the green hoodie in time for her visit to grandma. So Lilo, she's sad. She's disappointed. Why? How can that be? I mean, the usability testing was perfect. Site works excellent. The conversion rates were increasing by the month. But she's sad. This is how we tend to look at UX. We get a person from point A to point B. We want them to be happy and delighted and pleased and laughing to the point of tears. Because heaven forbid that somebody would be confused or uh, sad or, I don't know, uh, uninterested even, the worst. We want to get rid of all those bad feelings. That's UX. And this is what, so this, is, this is escalated. So now we're looking for this experience. Oh my god, it's just sliding all the way. Isn't that what UX is all about? It's sliding across the ice, no friction. What happens to our brains when everything is easy? It turns into habits, things we do without thinking. We switch, off our, switch on our autopilot, switch off our brains. We conserve energy, which is good. And this is good for like turning on the light switch in the bathroom at night when you need to pee, but I mean for making conscious decisions, it's not really that good, is it? Putting people's brains on autopilot? If you know what Amazon one click to buy is, slap the person next to you. Nobody knows. So, so Amazon one click to buy is, is, a, is a thing that you can set up for Amazon in your account. So you actually just click one button and uh, it's, it's the money's charged from your account, and the book is sent. And I activated this, of course. I love books. So I started buying books. Click, click. I heard about a book at a conference. Someone told me via email. I'm in a chat. Somebody tells me about a book. I, I just buy it. It's awesome. Except I don't have time to read all those books, do I? So high cost, low value. Also, I got a receipt for each and every book, <laughs> which was really bad for bookkeeping. So that was more work and administration for me. It's excellent for, for return on investment. The more people use the reptilian brain, of course, that's awesome. But is that, is that what we went into UX for? For people to not have an experience? What's our promise to users? Why did we, why did we become passionate about UX in the first place? I urge you all to think about this. Is it about conversion? When did we all become conversion optimizers? It's about our promise to users, our pledge, taking responsibility, doing UX. So what happens when we turn on the autopilot? We love to talk about these examples, don't we? Forms. We, we reduce the number of form fields and more people sign up. In fact, Jerry McGovern has what an often quoted article on his site 
talking about HSBC mortgage, mortgages and, and applying for a mortgage. And they reduced it from 17 form fields to four form fields. And conversion rates were like, went out the roof. I mean, 400% or something. Loan applications. And everybody's quoting this. Look, look at what UX can do for you. But nobody's asking, OK, what happened to those people? Were they happy with their loans? Could they have gotten a better deal elsewhere? Are they in more debt now that they couldn't handle? Why aren't we asking those questions? So I work a lot with health services, and one of them is a really popular service called Ask a Psychiatrist. And so we thought, OK, let's move it to the front page, because everybody wants this service. And what happened was <laughs> it got more used, of course. But the people, or the people handling that service, three people, couldn't handle the onslaught of like, people asking the psychiatrist. It's, there were so many now that the service got worse. So the experience got worse because now it took longer to get an answer. So is that good design? Was that good UX? In Sweden, I do my grocery shopping online. We have a great service called Matem. And it's super fast. You just click that button, and it, it just pops into your basket. There's a cute animation. It pops into your basket. So what do you do when something's really fast? So I want three items of something. I just click it three times. So 99% of the time, it's pre-filled with one item. Sometimes it's pre-filled with six items, because they have this offer. And I can't tell you the number of times I've come home with 18 liters of milk, because I clicked that button three times. I thought, three liters of milk. And I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm not alone. Is that good design? Making something easy is not what it's about, is it? It's about really caring. Because we don't really want to become like the mobile operators in Sweden. Four of them made the same woman with a cognitive disorder sign up for four different mobile plants that she couldn't afford and then sued her over it. You can't make anything that easy. That, that's, it's, it's not fair. I met a guy last night who bought a book from Amazon in his sleep. Do we want to make it that easy? So the oil industry, the textile industry, the food industry, they got a big bad reputation these days. But they didn't start out as evil. They're not evildoers. They started out solving a problem, a real problem for real people. How do we approach something when we get into designing websites that perhaps look more and more like cereal boxes with a big image, three messages? Are we already moving in this direction? Do our websites, have our websites start looking the same? I see this sketch all the time, all the time. So what happens if we instead start adding friction, instead of taking it away? Adding friction in the right places. So remember Lilu, her goal? Green hoodie, grandma, and what happened? Completely wrong direction. It was really, really quick, though. Three clicks, perfect, great conversion. But task completion? which we would love to talk about as well. Task completion is not the same as goal fulfillment, is it? She missed her goal completely. So we need to turn off the autopilot. Put in these moments when Lilo has to think. Think about what you're doing now. In our case, of course, little wolves. And all for asking, OK, are you sure? Because if you are this, this way, it's not, you're not, not going to get it in time for your goal, but if you add on express shipping, perhaps you'll do it. And it'll hurt, but you'll actually reach your goal. Sometimes people hate me in design meetings. And, and they look at my sketches, and, and they say, come on, our design guidelines say that all the headlines uh, are in small letters. You, you have this one in capital letters. It's not consistent. That doesn't work. You can't do that. 
consistent user experience, that's switching off brains. Consistency is not always good. Consistency gives you guidance. It shows the way. This is what you need to pay attention to right now. I'm one of those designers also who adds loaders when they're not rest necessary. <laughs> Anyone else does that? Even if it could load in, in a fraction of a second, I make it load in two. Because that gives people time to breathe, to think about what they're doing instead of just boom, 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 bombing them with information. It really works. It really does. OK, so if, uh, if you know what curling is, give me a big smile. <laughs> Everybody knows. Uh, so curling, it's a, it's a winter sport, obviously, on ice. And uh, three, three team members, one of them throws a curling stone across the ice, like that. Two others takes a broom, starts sweeping in front of the curling stone, essentially creating zero friction for the stone to hit its target. And in Sweden, we have this popular psychology phenomenon where we call, call people curling parents. It's not a good thing. You take away friction. The children aren't as resilient anymore. They get disappointed. They meet more adversity. They're not prepared for life. I'd like to propose curling designers. Isn't that what's happening? We're making it so easy that users just, they, I'm OK, I'm just going to click there, because that's what you told me to do. And it's just three clicks, excellent. I'm going to do it. Don't want to pay attention to that, thanks. And what happens, people get sad and disappointed, like Lilu. We need to feel accomplishment as humans, don't we? And there's this phenomenon we all talk about, gamification. Isn't it funny how we all talk about, awesome, we need gamification in our website. <laughs> but let's not make it challenging. What? Are you familiar with what gamification means? So I rent rooms by the hour all the time. in my coaching practice. Uh, so I signed up for, with a company called Coaching House. They rent rooms by the hour. And they had these really long forms you had to sign up with. Really long forms. And uh, I thought I was done. I got confirmation, finally, I'm going to be able to rent these rooms and get access to my online account, my online booking system. And I got this email that says, you will find the password by reading the welcome information carefully. And then I did read that welcome information carefully. And at the end, in this film, you'll get your password. And I watched that film, and the password was given away one letter per minute while a woman was explaining the code of conduct. <laughs> you could not be adding more friction. But it was fantastic, because they get people who know how to behave. <laughs> they know what the deal is. But don't trust me, trust Kevin Spacey. This is what he said. You make it hard, you create loyal, active, and serious users. Because you don't want to catch everyone. That's not design. You need to think about who you're designing for. Who can be your serious, active, loyal users? What do you expect from them? So you need to decide where your loyalty lies. And I, there's, here's a pro tip. It's not with a single one of them. It's with all of them. Because only then can you create the balance of a win-win situation where the user and business both meet their goals. You need to think about the long term. You need to think about why you're doing UX. So don't hide what you're really doing. Show it. Add friction. Create a conversation. Help people make better decisions. 
make them stop and think and not just glide along the ice. If we can add these small wolves, you're going to make the brain work harder. But the chances of people actually reaching their goals is so much higher. This is what you're after. Good brain workouts. Because if you really care about users and really care about their goals, and you're adding friction, and they're all the right places, that's when you can say that you're actually creating a better world. That's when you can say, we can live happily ever after. Thank you. <laughs>